And I think if uh, there would be a, a violent protest uh, and violence in Georgia, I think um, the conflict can escalate uh, uh, similarly to what happened in Ukraine. There's a, there's a even possibility of Russian involvement, I think, uh, kind of, um, and even possibility of war again. Uh, if there would be overthrow of Georgian government, especially because Saakashvili uh, government, uh, Saakashvili, if Saakashvili would again come to power, so it's like war with Russia would be, I think, very uh, almost uh, kind of uh, almost certain. I think a uh, very uh, kind of real possibility because uh, Saakashvili is uh, kind of uh, wants this. Uh, he openly supported uh, such a conflict in Ukraine, and I think he he might lead to similar war uh, in Georgia. And I think current Georgian government tries to oppose this. And this is because also because this is in the interest of the Western governments to try to um, kind of uh, use basically Ukraine and countries like Georgia uh, against Russia and, uh, and of, to achieve uh, their goal of weakening uh, Russia. And maybe this is the point to bring in Georgia because the, what happened on the Maidan is unique in the way that it was extremely violent, that 100 people were killed by political forces who wanted to change the government. Uh, inside and outside, people were willing to have 100 people die. But the phenomenon of uh, color revolutions in order to change politics of former Soviet states, or even of countries in, in Asia, that is not a new phenomenon. And if we look at Georgia, where we also had a Rose Revolution back in 2003, and Georgia, uh, Ukraine had a peaceful uh, Orange Revolution in 2004, and then a violent Maidan massacre in 2014, something that we are afraid of, and I bring in now Lasha, is that a scenario like this, might be possible also in Georgia or in other countries where we have governments that are challenged by certain groups in society. And then that if violence comes into play, then it could it, it is what happened in Ukraine. It is what then led to a change of foreign policy of Ukraine. Um, Lasha, if you want to ask anything about this, please jump in. Um, my question is, um, Dr. Kachanovsky, do you think it is reasonable to expect that something like this could happen again in another country like Georgia. I think I uh, saw a, a statement by uh, uh, like state security agency of Georgia, I don't know its exact name, but they stated like a few years ago that there was a preparation that they received information that uh, former members of the government of uh, former president Saakashvili, who at the time was in Ukraine, and they also moved to Ukraine, and some of them occupy a top position in the police, in the internal uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs, and even in prosecution general office in the charge of investigation of Maidan massacre. So they became members of a new government in Ukraine, and they had access to all this um, information and so on. And, and uh, according to state, uh, the statement, official statement by Georgian Ministry or kind of or agency in charge of state security that they had information, intelligence information, that there was similar plan to conduct a basically a uh, stage your Maidan um, uh, type of protest in uh, Georgia, specifically um, to protest against the incumbent government and also to stage provocations, uh, similar to what happened on Maidan. So this was also basically, and this was also stated by uh, Prime Minister of Georgia, and he also referred to kind of um, to similar Maidan style provocations, which uh, what it means is basically Maidan massacre and other types of violence which took place on Maidan. Because in addition to Maidan massacre, false flag Maidan massacre, there were also um, killing false flag killings of um, of a few protesters, and there were also like false flag abduction and kidnapping uh, of and crucifixion of Maidan activists who actually was uh, kind of uh, was staged by Maidan opposition, and this was was not just my uh, kind of um, or kind of just statement. This actually was uh, supported by uh, Ukrainian police investigation under Zelensky and police course investigation because they said that there was no nobody was responsible for this kidnapping uh crucifixion or and uh, kind of and, and torture of this activist because this evidence that it was staged uh, staged by 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 him and uh, Madonna of opposition leaders so this is like I think event which was likely to or could have happened in Georgia because I think um, uh, the methods 
And this is why I say that my research is not only limited to UK and Passe, because I mentioned there are other similar cases, like in Venezuela, reports of snipers shooting both police and protesters in Venezuela. In other countries, uh, there are like statements that similar situations happen in Lithuania and Vilnius, in other situations. So I think this is in Syria and so on. So I think uh, the same kind of method can be used. And I think also forgotten very important um, uh, precedent was taking place in Romania. Uh, because Romania, in Romania, um, like several years ago, persecution, uh, military persecutors who investigated what happened in uh, Romania during the so-called Romanian Revolution in 1989, they charged uh, not uh, former members of um, communist leadership of Romania who were blamed for the massacre of almost 1,000 people during this event, uh, during this overthrow of the government, but they charged new uh, leaders of Romania who came to power after this uh, Kind of uh, this oversaw of uh, communist government in Romania for this massacre because they stay say that this, they basically organized this kind of um, false flag uh, shooting of of uh, of of on uh, protesters who were supporting new government by the members of um, military force which were also supporting new government. So this was like a fire of, specifically in order to inflame protests and to blame a uh, former uh, president of Georgia and uh, former president of Romania. Uh, kind of Chelsea was executed for this um, massacres, and I think this is now official investigation. So this is not just some kind of statement. And again, uh, almost no media coverage of this. So I think this could have uh, happened not only in uh, um, kind of in in uh, Georgia. This can happen in many other countries. I think um, because this method is uh, kind of. Uh, kind of can be extended, and this is why, especially if you have media just following all this uh, without any critical coverage, and I think this is uh, can have such consequences. And based on my theory, I think this can happen also in other places, including uh, Georgia, if um, if there is uh, such people willing to resort to such actions. Uh, well, Dr. Shinovsky, this is uh, obviously a um, tremendous work uh, and a uh, huge body of research. So congratulations, it's an extremely important book. And <clears throat> the tragedy of the whole situation is that the, the problem is that in Georgia, you don't see this. Um, just like the rest of the uh, sort of past or the rest of the period that took place between 2003 and 2012 has been sort of marginalized, covered up or ignored. Um, you know, this kind of a thorough research, um, it just unfortunately is not being done in Georgia. And, um, um, you know, we're all fortunate that you, you produce this work in this book so that people can just refer to it and see what happened. Um, from the Georgian perspective, uh, let me just ask you, because obviously there's an international point of view um, um, of what you have written. Um, and uh, I just want to sort of narrow it down to Georgia. Um, you mentioned Saakashvili a number of times. Um, this was part of, this was sort of the effort on the United National Movement to do what exactly? To help um, the ultra right wing forces, neoconservative forces uh, out of Washington, um, sort of the same old, um, you know, the establishment that was hoped that the, that Saakashvili and 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 his party and um, and the politicians that sort of followed blindly that that ideology sort of were hoping to do what they were hoping to overthrow Yanukovych and was it. Was there a realistic prospect for the European Union afterwards for Ukraine? Was there a realistic prospect for NATO uh, membership? Uh, and then we all know how Washington sort of aided the entire process. Uh, <clears throat> um, I read some of the chapters uh, with Biden sort of hurrying the process, the then vice president, um, into telling Yanukovych to basically flee and, and get out of the country. Um, and then you had some other Georgian characters there, like Giovanni, I forgot the uh, gentleman's first name, openly admitting, um, as far as I, as I can recall, um, <clears throat> that indeed shootings and, you know, snipers were employed 
Um, so in the end, what, how would the, how, why was this, the Georgia was sort of, a, a how was Georgia a beneficiary of this whole situation? If you don't, I guess that's the way to put the question. Um, were they going to sort of ride this wave of democratization and westernization or what was the behind the scenes sort of philosophy in doing this? Uh, did they actually hope that they would just separate, uh, they'll just make uh, Ukraine with the help of Georgia, um, uh, you know, a member of NATO or, or any other, you know, European Union? Um, Yes, I think, uh, again, I think uh, it's important uh, to uh, kind of look into evidence and also Georgian uh, kind of uh, uh, angle and uh, involvement is very important. Uh, but I think uh, the government of Saakashvili at the time you know, was actually a um, former government of Georgia. So he was uh, defeated in elections, I think, in uh, in the end of 2013, actually, before Maidan started or shortly before Maidan started. So he was no longer in power. And that's why I think that one of the reasons uh, which they might became involved is because they wanted to keep power. And and uh, after the Maidan overthrow, many of them became a uh, member of leader, um, former government ministers and leaders of um, of uh, Saakashvili government, including Saakashvili himself, became uh, members of uh, Ukrainian government. Saakashvili became head of uh, regional government in Odessa, and he was often even a uh, position of prime minister of Ukraine by Poroshenko. So I think this was one reason is just to, to stay in power. Uh, kind of and keep power because power is uh, kind of uh, is uh, kind of a way to avoid persecution and to um, and uh, that's why they were not extradited to Georgia after even the Georgian government um, kind of convicted Saakashvili, Saakashvili in absentia uh, and uh, other uh, former members of uh, Saakashvili government were convicted like for I think for even for torture and other abuses of power uh, Ukrainian government did not uh, kind of. Um, uh, kind of, uh, deport them to Georgia because they were members of a new government and they supported new government. And I think another reason, maybe international involvement, because of um, Saakashvili uh, government and he himself was a very pro-Western government, which is uh, linked by uh, to the West. And the same applies to Maidan opposition. Uh, leaders of Maidan opposition included a uh, kind of coalition or ally, uh, informal alliance of oligarchic parties led by uh, Poroshenko, by Turchino. Uh, by Timoshenko, Yulia Timoshenko, who are basically oligarchs, uh, very rich kind of Ukrainians who uh, enrich themselves after the collapse of the Soviet Union, and uh, and they become allied with far right, with Svoboda and right sector during the Maidan protests, and they even adopted this uh, glory to Ukraine greeting, which was actually a far right greeting uh, modeled on uh, uh, Nazi uh, greeting of Nazi Germany of uh, similar uh, greetings of other fascist parties and so on, and they open, openly kind of adopted this. So, and they also uh, kind of said that their goal is to support Ukraine becoming a member of the European Union and member of NATO. And, uh, and uh, for this reason, there was uh, support also by Western uh, governments, including the United States, for this uh, Maidan opposition and for former uh, government of uh, Saakashvili, because they were regarded as pro-Western one and supporting kind of um, uh, Western integration of Ukraine and Georgia into kind of um, including into NATO membership, but uh, in case of Ukraine, there was a, a division between Eastern Ukraine and, uh, and Western Ukraine on this issue, and uh, there was strong opposition to uh, membership of NATO by majority of Ukrainians before Maidan. And in case of uh, European Union membership, there was split between like about uh, kind of between West and the center of Ukraine, and also between East and the South, which were wanted actually further integration with Russia. So Western part and uh, central part of Ukraine wanted uh, European Union membership and NATO membership, but eastern and southern part of Ukraine wanted um, uh, kind of integration with Russia, not just, uh, how to say, unification with uh, Russia, but in the, because integration similar like a customs union with Russia and uh, open borders and um, and uh, in Donbass and Crimea there was separatist movement um, and uh, support for joining Russia uh, as, a, as, a, as part of their regions. And so and I think in this case, um, I think this two motivations led uh, kind of uh, one motivation is to seize power in Ukraine and to come to power, and including by uh, members of uh, former government of, Georgia, of Saakashvili, and another was um, kind of international dimension because they were supported by the West. So they basically believed that they would have uh, immunity from any kind of persecution. They would they would receive support from the West, 
And this is what happened because Western governments supported them with no questions asked, no investigation uh, were conducted. They all, Western governments uh, kind of, they all, always blame uh, Yanukovych and they also kind of um, regarded basically Ukraine as a tool to weaken Russia. And that's why they supported this uh, overthrow of uh, Yanukovych government, including by involvement uh, with uh, kind of this uh, snipers from Georgia and, uh, and Farag, because for them this was beneficial. This was kind of a tool to uh, to weaken Russia because I think uh, in case of NATO membership there is no real possibility of you can become a member of NATO because this is Russia said that they would not accept this and we have a war actually in Ukraine right now and this is one of the reasons of Russian intervention is actually is not to allow you can become a member of NATO and uh, in case of European Union membership I support it actually European Union membership. Uh, one of the first publicly calling for European Union membership as a way to avoid a similar uh, conflict and similar violence which took place on, in, in the Balkans, in the former Yugoslavia. Uh, but I think in case of Ukraine, it's already too late. And, uh, and uh, Maidan was motivated originally for, for kind of as a desire to join the European Union because they claim that uh, Yanukovych uh, uh, suspended his decision to join the European Union free trade and association agreement which, uh, but this agreement did not actually involve any provision of for Ukraine membership uh, in the European Union. So this was misrepresented by people, and people were told basically that you can can join European Union, even so there was no such possibility. And only after the Russian invasion, European Union agreed to offer such a membership to kind of possibility of membership to Ukraine. But I think this is I think quite also very important um, clarification because. I think, and this is Georgian experience in this regard, is very telling as well, because when Georgia was in war with Russia in 2008, Western governments also supported Georgia, and uh, there was very positive media coverage of, of, of Georgia and Saakashvili government in the West, but after, and, and the current government, uh, European Union leadership said that they would no longer support, or they would actually uh, oppose, actually, even the membership of, uh, Georgia, of Georgia in the European Union because of the new law and uh, about this foreign agents, which was um, which was introduced by the new government of Georgia and supported as a way to basically become a more neutral um, kind of um, uh, not to join this uh, war, uh, proxy war in Ukraine. And and I think the same can happen with Ukraine. Uh, if Ukraine would end this war, uh, if there would be peaceful agreement, and Ukraine would accept neutrality, agreement uh, would become neutral as it was before um, the Maidan. In such case, I think the European Union can also abandon its promise for European Union agreement, uh, European Union membership, and you can again would not be uh, kind of a similar situation similar to Georgia. You can would not have any real possibility of joining the European Union because now this is just motivated by war and just to say, just to show the people that Ukrainians have future. But I don't think this is very likely to happen uh, based on my research. This is just basically a bait or kind of just to, to show that this is a way to, to motivate Ukrainians to fight, but I don't think this is likely to happen. And may, maybe I would like to state here again, um, everybody, please support uh, Dr. Kachanovsky by uh, donating toward his book project uh, for open access. Um, I'll mention this again later and you find the link in the description. And we need to emphasize here that despite all of the rhetoric coming from the West, that a transition of power has always to be peaceful and that the Western countries are democracy loving, it is irrefutable that sometimes Western countries support violent uprisings and violent overthrows of current governments. I think this is this is absolutely clear. And the danger is that when you have certain instabilities, that then these forces might come uh, to the fore and even instigate violence in order to justify the cha a change of government. Can you can you generalize your insights and say like under what kind of conditions? Is it most dangerous that political violence, even inspired from the outside, becomes part of a process um, from what you have studied? 
I think this is the illustration. You can is just perfect illustration of this because when this started, my done started. I I wrote an article in Open Democracy predicting this is a real danger of war in Ukraine, civil war in Ukraine, breakup of Ukraine, which happened uh, in in Donbass and uh, this Crimea basically uh, uh, process this Crimea succeeding Donbass in which there was support for joining Russia also succeeding and becoming uh, with Russian support. So now you have breakup of Ukraine, which already happened civil war, and now this escalated to war between Russia and Ukraine, which also became proxy war between Russia and the West in Ukraine, which is, I think, most dangerous and most significant conflict in the world. So this is, I think, just an uh, illustration of, of danger and uh, kind of, uh, of uh, such events, which were supported by the West, even so... The Western governments, they uh, like they would never support such policies in their own countries. They would not support what was so, uh, like what happened, I think, on January 6th in the U.S. And the reaction to this is totally different <laughs> kind of uh, in the West to what happened uh, in Maidan, because there was, even Zelensky said, there was similarity between Maidan, overthrow of Yanukovych and uh, January 6th. But uh, kind of uh, U.S. government, Biden administration supported this. Uh, they uh, they condemn far-right and neo-Nazis in the U.S., but they claim that uh, even uh, a lot of Republicans are kind of uh, fascist and so on. But if you look into actually UK, they actually de facto supporting the far right and even open neo-Nazis like Azov movement, uh, right sector, uh, without any kind of um, reservation. So they, and even so this is I think very dangerous because they can turn on, on the West as happened before many times like Al-Qaeda in, uh, in Afghanistan and during war against Soviet Union became uh, Al Qaeda, which was responsible for 9 11 and other kind of attacks, terrorist attacks. And you have another example of Iran. In Iran in 1950s, there was a US led and British led um, uh, overthrow of uh, Iranian government, which was um, actually, uh, this was openly admitted by US intelligence, the classified documents, and British intelligence also admitted such that they actually conducted such overthrow. A coup against the um, Iranian government in the 1950s. So this government, and they specifically said that they did this using force like violence in order to blame incumbent government. And this led to escalation of this conflict. Uh, 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 Iranian revolution was a reaction to this. Iran became very anti Western. And now there is all another conflict taking place between the war, uh, kind of not uh, war in uh, Gaza, but uh, you have also Iran involved in this uh, in opposition to the Israel, Israel, the possibility of war between Israel and Iran. And and also possibility of conflict between Iran and the United States, or war between Iran and the United States. You have also Iran involved in Syria war, and now Iran supporting Russia in the war in Ukraine. So this is like just another example of uh, how this uh, similarly kind of uh, massacres which um, uh, which took place like on Maidan can have such consequences because conflicts escalate, and and uh, and uh, this is why it's important to study them and study from objective perspective, scholarly perspective, and not just rely on uh, narratives promoted by government or politicians because they have kind of uh, they have incentive to mislead, and this is what happened with Ukraine. Lasha, do you want to jump in? Just real, yeah, just real quickly, um, just a quick comment and then a question. Um, so I think obviously the, the, you know, the main issue here has always been the NATO expansion and the Russia's concern uh, uh, on that front. But um, I think, uh, and then you could comment on this and uh, let me know if I'm on the right track here in my analysis. But um, do you think that this, this, sort of, uh, you know, UNM, so by the time Saakashvili had already lost the election and, you know, the, the Georgian dream had come to power, and do you think this was the sort of Saakashvili's and his United National Movement uh, Party's sort of attempt uh, to somehow preserve the involvement in Maidan, somehow preserve um, and continue on, um, uh, you know, preserving power, um, you know, in, in, in some other form, Obviously, um, uh, you know, using violence or, uh, you know, whoever it was directly or indirectly, uh, you know, Georgian side was involved um, in, 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 that, um, in that process. Um, do you think this was sort of the attempt, you know, because we all, we've all seen those bizarre videos of Saakashvili being on rooftops and, um, you, know, you know, one wonders whether this was a, an attempt to continue his power somehow. Um, uh, and, you know, this very naive, uh, bizarre hope that he would be returned back to Georgia. Um, that's that's sort of a, 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 on, the, on, the, on the commentary side. And then um, the question 
you know, the question I have uh, is also um, is about geopolitics, original geopolitics in Georgia, uh, in the South Caucasus. Um, as you know, the uh, elections are approached, Georgia is approach, approaching elections on the 26th of October. Um, and um, a lot of people are expecting uh, that, that, you know, some sort of a political upheaval could result uh, from these elections. Um, how do you see Russia's role in this? Um, uh, what do you think Russia will do? Do you think there is a possibility that Russia might acquiesce if, and I think this is a big if, um, if there is a, an attempt by the West to, um, uh, you know, you know, create yet another, uh, you know, color revolution in Georgia or make an attempt at least. Um, what do you think Russia's role will be if it escalates to that to that level? I think this is an important question. What um, if the conflict in uh, Georgia would uh, become uh, violent, uh, similar to Ukraine? What would happen with Georgia? Because you have uh, Russia now control uh, South Ossetia and Abkhazia regions of uh, Georgia, which became also like similar to uh, Crimea and Donbass, so separatist regions. And this is now a Russian process are there and uh, also involved in this war. And there was a war between Georgia and Russia in 2008, uh, kind of uh, 2008, similar to what uh, happened. Again, in Ukraine, also kind of uh, uh, now with Russian invasion of Ukraine. But uh, uh, but if you look into actually uh, kind of um, Saakashvili, this interesting also dimension because Saakashvili, when he was in Ukraine, he was kind of uh, initially open, offered a position of prime minister of Ukraine by Poroshenko, who actually was uh, study, who studied actually with Saakashvili in the Institute of, of International Relations in Kyiv in the end of 1980s in the Soviet Union. And actually, when I wanted to apply for this in, uh, university to kind of uh, to study international relations in the end of 1980s in Soviet Ukraine, in the same university, I, I was told I cannot even think about uh, doing this because this was just for members of elite. You need to get a, a clearance from KGB and so on. And obviously, I cannot get such clearance and not such admission. But uh, Kashvili then was uh, studying in, in this university and even he was uh, regarded as uh, recruited or offered recruitment by uh, KGB and so on along with Poroshenko. But I think uh, what um, after Maidan, he uh, actually uh, he started uh, to go in conflict with uh, Poroshenko and Poroshenko accused uh, Takashvili of basically of trying to stage a coup in Ukraine on orders from Russia. So he basically, Takashvili uh, was accused in Ukraine by Maidan opposition, uh, his kind of leaders from Maidan opposition government at the time of trying to stage coup uh, and working for Putin. So this is like kind of uh, this is like politics. So they always blame Russia no matter what is real or not. But this was totally kind of very strange. And this is why he was uh, trying to escape on the roof from uh, Ukrainian uh, kind of uh, security forces trying to uh, who, who wanted to arrest him. And later when he was supposed to testify at the Maidan massacre trial as a witness, uh, he was uh, on the day before his testimony. He was uh, put on plane by again Ukrainian government forces and flew to Poland. And this is why he never testified at the trial. So on the day of basically one day before testimony, he was flew out of Ukraine and he was not even given opportunity to testify. And, and afterwards, he returned to Georgia, tried to stay similar kind of overstall the Georgian government. And I think if uh, there would be a, a violent protest and violence in Georgia, I think uh, the conflict can escalate uh, uh, similarly to what happened in Ukraine. There, there, there even possibility of Russian involvement, I think, uh, kind of, um, and even possibility of war again. Uh, if there would be overthrow of Georgian government, especially because Saakashvili uh, government, uh, Saakashvili, if Saakashvili would again come to power, so it's like war with Russia would be, I think, very uh, almost uh, kind of uh, almost certain. I think a uh, very uh, kind of a real possibility because uh, Saakashvili is uh, kind of uh, wants this. Uh, he openly supported uh, such a conflict in Ukraine, and I think he he might lead to similar war uh, in Georgia. And I think current Georgian government tries to oppose this. And this is because also because this is in the interest of the Western governments to try to kind of uh, use basically Ukraine and countries like Georgia uh, against Russia and, uh, and to achieve uh, their goal of weakening uh, Russia and uh, national power. And I think Russia 
can uh, illegally uh, invade the Ukraine, but I think this war has uh, kind of uh, started in the 2014 mass protests uh, and the violence which took place in specific Maidan massacre. And if similar event would take place, I think then uh, conflict can escalate very rapidly and would be devastating. Uh, would have devastating consequences to Georgia as it was to Ukraine. Uh, we're now witnessing this, and I just uh, talked recently to um, kind of uh, my relatives, the people or people who live in Ukraine, in Western Ukraine, which is I'm from, and they tell me stories that now even, and I saw videos, now like people, uh, men basically are captured on the street, they just in the middle of the street, they are taken without even possibility to contact, to contact their families, they are taken from the street by the police and military recruitment officers, beaten often and put uh, via medical commission without any kind of uh, examination of their medical conditions and sent to, to training and then to, sent to frontline without uh, kind of without uh, even sufficient military training or weapons to fight in this war against Russia, and many of them are killed again. And now there are empty streets and empty locations, even in Western Ukraine, which is very anti-Russian. And this is, they never supported like joining Russia, they always supported Western integration of Ukraine and so on, independence of Ukraine. But now I think even the men are hiding there, they do not want to fight. Uh, but again, this is never reported by the media because uh, kind of now you have a uh, UN is a very useful tool uh, by the West uh, to use this uh, kind of uh, against Russia. And I think this was the initial goal of the West basically to support this overstop, even if it, if it was illegal, it was unconstitutional, it was uh, criminal. Um, and it uh, was undemocratic and a violation of human rights. This is like um, uh, this is not accidental. There are many other cases like Western government supported um, uh, even a uh, type of Al Qaeda um, uh, in Syria uh, during the civil war in Syria. So this is and um, they supported um, kind of uh, uh, so-called freedom fighters, um, uh, uh, which became later Taliban and Al Qaeda in Afghanistan and so and uh, many others. They supported after end of World War II. They supported UN and UPA fighters in Ukraine which were uh, Nazi collaborators in UK. So this is like nothing new for the West. I think uh, this is why it's very important to understand not only Ukrainian politics, but also Western uh, politics and US politics in particular. And this is what I study US politics and policy towards Ukraine. And so for me, this is not a surprise. This is actually how uh, uh, politics work and, and especially US politics, they have a very different policy in the US and their own countries compared to what they do in the in, uh, for other countries, especially countries which are like, uh, used to be like in American countries or countries which are not um, regarded as uh, kind of uh, as uh, very close like Canada or uh, countries in Western Europe. For them, UK or Georgia, I think this is just tool against uh, kind of in the geopolitical games. And recently, just in the last few days, there was an interview by uh, Victoria Nuland. And in this interview, uh, Victoria Nuland openly admitted that uh, U.S. and British governments gave advice to the Lansky government not to sign peace agreement with Russia in the spring of 2022 to sign agreement uh, which would end the war because they said this is not a good agreement uh, and would not be deal for Ukraine. Even so, Ukraine delegation uh, signed this um, preliminary agreement. They uh, agreed to neutrality of Ukraine in exchange of Russia withdrawing its forces from Ukraine and uh, from occupied territories of Ukraine with the exception of uh, Crimea. And Donbass, which which uh, fate of which were decided later uh, at the meeting between Zelensky and Putin, but um, but uh, uh, Newland and uh, Western governments and Boris Johnson actually were sent to Kiev to block this deal because it was not in the interest of the West, so they just sacrificed Ukrainians uh, and uh, uh, more than hundred thousand lives of Ukrainian men were sacrificed because this was in the interest of the West. So this is like cynical policy, and they actually claim that they are. So Ukrainian, they support Ukraine, but actually they don't support this. For them, this is quite opposite. So and I think the same kind of rhetoric is used in Georgia and so on in other situations. And actually, a very interesting also case, it's not only governments, but also NGOs, which are funded by uh, by Western governments and Western um, uh, foundations. When I studied uh, after Maidan, uh, there was, uh, after Zelensky was elected as new president, um, uh, more than 20 Ukrainian NGOs, uh, leading NGOs issued a, a collective statement, collective letter saying that uh, Zelensky uh, and his government uh, have no uh, right basically to negotiate with Russia to end war in Donbass. Uh, this was before Russian invasion. So they said that you, uh, this is like a red line. Uh, and uh, they, uh, this is like NGOs. They uh, kind of the issue basically said to Zelensky government not to negotiate the end of the war because they said this is against 
kind of, uh, kind of uh, again, the interest of UK and so on. Even so, I check all this uh, international, uh, all this NGOs, non government organizations, and all but one of them were financed by Western governments and or financed by um, uh, Western foundations like Soros Foundation or any other foundation. So they, they basically talk on behalf of Ukrainians, but they uh, were funded by the Western governments and the Western foundations, and they basically openly kind of uh, uh, in, uh, went against elected president of Ukraine, Zelensky, who promised uh, in, in his election campaign, uh, which led to his victory in this election campaign uh, as president of Ukraine to become, uh, to uh, end this war. And now, he uh, um, he is uh, when he switched to kind of uh, to opposite uh, from, from what he promised. He, he started to rely on uh, kind of saying that Ukraine would fight Russia, and, and uh, he now kind of uh, presents himself as leader, kind of fighting Russia. So all of these foundations, which are funded by Western governments, support him and his policy. No questions about human rights. No questions about violations. Even so, you have videos like people getting beaten, snatched on the street without any kind of a possibility opposition is almost totally destroyed you have uh, to, now electricity almost no um, um, you can half of you can has no power and uh, winter would be very devastating consequences you have seven million million of ukrainians left ukraine and uh, just uh, this is the devastating consequences but for them this is fine because they have exemption from mobilization <laughs> because again this is like a new elite actually and their interests i think are not supporting ukraine they act on behalf of western sponsors i think this similar situation was recently in georgia when this law was introduced about foreign agents and there was a big opposition they claim this is like russian law and so on but this is actually um, similar, something similar would be totally unacceptable in the U.S. or in the uh, countries like Canada, and I think this is why this is a policy which is can be only explained by American exception. Is uh, kind of theory which was uh, developed by my professor, uh, advisor Seymour Martin Lipset in the U.S., who said uh, like uh, basically the United States often act as believing that they are unique in terms of their kind of uh, their actions, and the same applies to kind of their foreign policy. And I think this is, can explain why U.S. policy is so different um, in the domestic area in uh, their own uh, policy in, uh, towards Americans. Or, uh, uh, compared to what uh, they uh, act in international arena in other countries uh, supporting such uh, policies which were never acceptable uh, in their own country. Politics is based on power and the elites in power, they want to increase their power internally and externally and whoever, whoever what, whichever, whatever helps their power is something they will support or is somebody they will work with. It is very sad, but the big lie that is fed is that this is a value-based or principle-based <laughs> Western democracy. Um, Dr. Kachanowski, um, we need to finish the interview here. I would like to thank you very much. And again, everybody, if you want to support Dr. Kachanowski's work, he is trying to raise funds to um, do an open access publishing so that the book can be downloaded by anyone. A download a look at his book parts of it are already out i will put all the links in uh, into the description you can uh, download a lot of his research for free and please support dr kachanowski on uh, fund.me the link will be below uh, dr kachanowski lasha thank you very much for your time today yes thank you very much and thank you everybody who contributed uh, for supporting my open access publication of this book i want to make uh, sure that more people have access to this information because uh, kind of this is i think of public of interest uh, public interest to learn actually what happened in ukraine and also to avoid repetition of similar situations and uh, kind of dangerous developments in other countries and I think this is kind of uh, why, I, that's why I try to make it open access and I appeal to everybody to read and to download and translate in any language and to republish in whole or in part, uh, kind of in public domain. Uh, this is, I think uh, this is what uh, is very important in addition just to doing research. So thank you. And again, thank you for the uh, interview. This is a very good idea. Also the translations, we will, we will keep on that and we will talk to you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much.